Hi, Flosstube. My name is Vera and welcome to my stitching corner. Um, let's stitch together. So today I will be continuing working on the uh, Vintage Summer Garden Bookshelf by Amy Sturt. Um, this is charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. So here's the name for anyone who's interested. Um, unfortunately, it's black and white uh, because if you've been here for a while, you know that my printer is black and white. Actually, well, we got a laser printer because I print a lot of um, uh, academic reading material like articles and things like that um, so it just made sense for us to have a black laser so we can have a the volume for cheaper um, and here is the size of this so it's going to be 700 stitches wide by 501 tall um, yeah so here is what it looks like today um, I know it's been a while since we've stitched on this together um, so let me just bring you up to speed in terms of some of the uh, specifics of where I'm at right now. So if you can, actually I um, locked the focus so you probably can't see the numbers here but I'll read them out for you. So right now I'm standing at 14,308 stitches out of 350,700 um, and that is 4.08 um so if you're here for the first time i'm working on the lower right corner um, on that first uh level of the shelf so if you can see it's a bit blurry but you kind of can see the the color um of what i'm referring to so yeah let's uh let's start stitching and i'll tell you a couple of stories of uh what's been going on with this with this uh, project and some other projects and kind of like what I've been up to. Um, and you can tell me what you've been up to too, <laughs> because um, I like interacting with you. Um, doggy girl, can you come to your place? Can you come to your place, please? Come on over here, come on, lie down. Oh, that's a good girl. That's a really good girl. Come on, lie down here. Yeah, go to your donut. Come on, lie down. Sorry about that. That's just part of part of a dog life. Um, she's been she's been acting a little bit weird uh, with me video filming. Um, weird as in she's developing like odd sort of like habits <laughs> to to what to do while while I'm stitching. Um, I think I've mentioned that earlier. So when um, when my husband and I were both working from home, she would just get knocked out the moment that my husband would start talking in meetings. Um, where lately what she's been doing with me um, is whenever I would start talking to the camera, she would start like acting up as in like, please give me attention or going and being naughty, um, like chewing books or investigating Velcro scotch on sandals. Um, things like that. So I've been trying to <laughs> find a different, um, well, not a different, but try to um, figure out what would settle her, settle her down. So I've been having her in the crate and that wasn't really successful. I've been letting her run around. That was not very successful. Um, so this time I brought her place, which is basically like a, her bed. Um, and we call it the donut because it's shaped like a donut um, and has like that cushion. Um, well, it is like a donut, basically, with like a cushion on the inside, so it's not like a, a pure hole. Um, and so she was lying down in the donut um, just before I started talking to the camera. And then the moment that I did, she got up and started investigating. So anyone who has a dog, you can relate, I think. I hope you can relate. Where are they? Ah. <laughs> I don't think I'm the only one who has a dog who's like not sure what to do with themselves um, when you start getting occupied. Um, yeah, so now she went and jumped on the windowsill and now she's watching out the window and I'm very happy that she found something to do because she's quiet, she's observing the buses go up and down the street. Um, And that makes me feel good because 
I know that she's satiated with whatever that is. She actually really likes watching life go by out the window. I think it's a border collie thing, to be honest with you, because um, they're farm dogs, right? So they would watch things while they're not working. Um, so if she watches buses and people, that's fine by me. So how, how has everyone been doing? Um, how's your stitching been going? Where am I? Oh, there it is. <laughs> For a moment I thought that I made like a double stitch with one color, but the colors were so similar here. So it's actually two stitches. Um, yeah, how's your stitching been going? Does anyone work on a new project? Did you, anyone pulled out something old and trying to finish it or work on it at least? Um, let's see. It feels like I haven't done a stitch with me for such a long time that I'm kind of getting a little bit lost with what I'm doing. I mean by talking and stitching and observing the pattern all at once. So I kind of, so here's an interesting one. So there's um, the edge of the book, I assume, right? The first book, where's the picture? This, this book, the honeybee. And this is the circle right here, there's the circle. And there are a couple of more flowers along the way here, which are those flowers here. And I'm having a little bit of a, like a decision dilemma. Should I continue going upwards or should I fill in this space here and then go upwards because the colors in here and here and here are quite different like for instance this red does not appear up here um in those greens i mean they only appear in the in the vegetation unless it's like those muted like dirt greens that i just did right now for instance um and yeah i'm finding myself kind of like jumping back and forth between um the pattern and the location of where to continue so as you can see, I started doing this part, but then every time I pick up a color in here, it just keeps on leading me like in this circular, which makes sense. Um, but that's just something that right now I have to make kind of like a decision where, for instance, if you would have been, like if you stitch diagonal or the 10 by 10 parking method or anything else, like it does take a little bit longer, but that decision is kind of taken away because you just follow you follow what you need to do according to the method or approach So it's morning for me right now. Um, let's see, what time is it? About 8.30. It doesn't feel like morning because, well, it still feels like morning, but I've already done a lot of things. Um, I usually wake up around six o'clock. Um, uh, but why am I mentioning this to you is because I've been having this relatively new way of um, dividing my stitching in the day and between the different projects that I have. Um, and I work on full coverages in the mornings for however long I'm able to do the sew. And I try to do it about maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, it depends on what the day is like and what else is going on. Um, and I'm just alternating between the different full coverages that I have uh, whenever I choose so. So I only have three of them. 
this one, the uh, supersized uh, Sanctuary of Knowledge, which I call the library, and uh, the park one, which is um, a fine art painting by George Surratt. And um, it's actually been a little bit slower. So in terms of progress, I'm doing less progress, but I'm much more enjoying um, the um, lack of pressure um, and also the variety that I have from it. So even though it's just three projects, it's still plenty of variety for me. Um, and I still get to see progress in each one of those projects. Um, and I don't get tired of anything. And I'm still kind of like looking forwards to switching things. So what I find is that for me, something between two to four days is how long I have patience to work on one project. So for instance, if I start working on this full coverage, the vintage garden, um, within three days, I will most likely have had enough of it and I would switch to a different full coverage for my morning's stitching. Um, and that's been like really helpful to recognize and sort of to know about myself. Um, and just having enough of a variety. And for me, as I said, it's three, three full coverages is enough for me to sort of reset my system to feel reignited, um, to stitch on any of the projects that I have. One, this one. Um, yeah. So that's kind of like what I've been doing lately. And I think I've been doing this about a month now. And there have been a couple of mornings that I did not feel like stitching full coverages. Um, for instance, when I feel like I'm a, near a finish of a smaller project, um, yeah, I just want to finish that project. Like if I have just the morning or the day to finish it, then I would sacrifice my full coverage for the sake of finishing something. Um, or there's a couple of times where we just didn't have time in the mornings, um, so I wasn't able to stitch. Uh, but for the most parts, I do about 150 to maybe 200 stitches um, on the full coverage in the mornings. And yeah. I've kind of let go of the idea of um, having a timeline for when I want things to be done because anything that I thought never happens. <laughs> and, you know, when we plan something, we plan it in an idealized version of what our life looks like. But that's never the case. Like, we never actually are able to stick to that. Or at least I'm not able to. Maybe, maybe some other people are. Um, and so whenever I decide I'm going to do X number of stitches per month and I will be able to finish this in whatever time frame, um, like a year and a half, three years, 10 years, whatever that is, um, I'm not able to stick to it. And that like really frustrated me, the inability to stick to my plan. And then I thought about it um, that when I make any calculations and project how long it takes me to do something, I never take into account surprises or um, out of the ordinary circumstances or my mood or anything. Um, so it actually doesn't really make sense to, at least in my case, um, to subject myself to a schedule of when to finish something. Um, so. I think every time I watch Floss Tube, like so many stitchers, they say, everything I tell you is going to be irrelevant or has been irrelevant because I totally changed my mind and did something completely else. Um, and you know, like that's kind of a an illumination, an illustration of what people actually do and what they say. And it's not necessarily that they're not sticking to their word. I think 
a lot of us are optimistic <laughs> with what we can do and that's that's a good thing because that's a hallmark of a creative person is that they think they can do everything because they have like this vision um they're optimistic that it all can be done um and you know like i'm sure that i do it and i will keep on doing it where I think I can do all sorts of things and make a plan of how to execute it and then realize that I, I didn't do the plan. <laughs> so instead, I shifted gears a little bit and I thought to myself, I'm just going to focus on things that I do rather than how much and what it will take to get them to a finish or um, to see it to a completion. And that's been really, really helpful. Um, yeah. I hope I'm making sense. I'm kind of like talking and stitching and looking at the pattern at the same time. So um, if I'm a little bit confusing or there's some gaps in what I'm saying, it's probably because of that. But I think you get the, the gist of it. Yeah, let me know if you can relate to it because... I would love to know where you are at um, and how your perception of what stitching has changed or more like evolved to be over time.
Hmm. I don't think I have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I did one too many. Okay. That's all right. I'm just trying to count so carefully. <laughs> So this color actually is, uh, there's a massive block of it right inside the circle. Uh, so it was similar to the patches of black um, between the flowers where you start stitching and you basically just do a lot of back and forth rows, which is very nice because then you get to see a lot of progress all at once. All right, let's see what's next. Oops. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is just filling in this, this area here, sort of like leftwards and upwards. Uh, but whenever I pick up a color in here and I can see that there's just a handful of stitches in the lower area, um, then I tend to start at the bottom, kind of like collect them, and then hopefully finish finish uh, whatever I was doing. So that's kind of what, why I'm panning back and forth. And sometimes you can see that I'm stitching in the bottom here. Because, you know, like if you're already picking up a thread with a color, um, I think to myself, I might as well just, you know, collect those four or five stitches at the bottom so I don't have to pick up that color again. <sighs> I really like this uh, green 3363, and I think right next to it there's a 3364. I don't remember which one is the darker one, but they're... Um, Kind of like pistachio, muted pistachios. There was a project recently I was stitching with with those two. Oh, I'm still stitching it. It's the uh, Fields of Gold. Now I remember where I came, came across it. It's, um, I think it's kind of like a Tuscany, Tuscany scenery and um, there's, um, those would be cedar woods, right? Um, and they're kind of in the background. Um, and I think those, some of the colors are the ones that are being used. Like this hazy, hazy cedar. So if you're wondering um, whether I've changed something with my Q-snap, um, you're correct. I am... Um, I got uh, a second pair of Q-snaps um, that are 8 by 8 and what I've done is I've mixed and matched my 11 by 17 with the 8 by 8 and now I have one Q-snap as an 8 by 11 and another one as an eight by 17. Um, so I'm using the, just a second, we can. Um, so I'm using the eight by 11 here. So actually this is, let me just shift it around for you. This is the end, see right here. Um, so I'm using it here and the 11, no, 8 by 17, uh, which looks like a panoramic photograph, is um, I've put the uh, Sanctuary of Knowledge on it. Um, and that's kind of like my experiment with a different sized um, stitching area. Hey, girly. What'd you find there? Come on over here. Okay, 
I feel ignored by the dog. <laughs> she looked at me and was like, okay, and what? <laughs> um, what was I saying? That I'm using the um, 8 by 17 which is like, it's really panoramic. Um, it's really nice actually though, because um, the working surface is just eight. Um, my goodness, what am I doing? Um, <laughs> it's tough today. It is a tough day. Uh, anyhow, I like it. You'll see it in the future. <laughs> I was so excited to do a stitch with me. Um, it's been like a, such a long time. And I thought I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Um, all right, I think I'm going to be finishing for today because clearly my brain is not working. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> I did. So let me just tell you what we've done. Um, 91 stitches. Oh, no, it's not sad. It's, it's, it is what it is. Um, so yeah. I, I don't think you can see any difference in, in here, but we basically filled in a little bit of this um, and some of the gaps, which is always nice because then the image looks a bit more complete. Uh, so I hope you have a good day. Um, thank you for joining me um, and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone. <laughs>